I didn't like EG's draft. And let's be real, guys. Credit is due where it's due. I, I messed that up. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you, sound like, you sound like me, man. I always get those sayings yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Credit, credit due. Credit due. Now, now, here's your hosts. The League Dead. Kevin. Kevin Mitchell, Mitchell. And Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am the League Dad, and I am joined tonight uh, by Mitchell and Kevin. Unfortunately, for the second week in a row, our friend Alistair is not here, and it's partly my fault, I guess. I was supposed to come here, and we were going to try to record earlier, but uh, I got caught up and thought that I would be early, but I wasn't, and so... Alistair had to go to bed because, you know, he's got work early tomorrow. He's a he's a working man, that that one. So, unfortunately, partly my fault. I'm sorry, Alistair, but uh, you're with us in spirit, and I hope you get good rest, make that money, and get into the LCS, and don't forget your fellow co-hosts over here when you make it there. All right, buddy? Uh, but I do have Kevin and Mitchell. Uh, always a pleasure to have you guys on here. Uh, how are you guys doing, Kevin? Let's start with you. What's, what's going on with you, man? How's uh, life treating you? I'm doing well. I have some old coworkers coming in from ta- uh, from out of town on Friday, so I took a day off. I'm gonna go see them, so that's awesome. And then, yeah, uh, I also took Monday off, so I'm gonna have a long weekend. I am looking forward oh. to it. It's been a while since I had a nice break. Nice man. Nice. Good, good to hear nice. that, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm I'm doing pretty good. I actually just dropped the bottom right before this podcast, but I'll tell <laughs> I'll tell you folks what just happened. Hold on, hold um, on, hold on, hold on. Before you go, <laughs> let me give context. Mitchell before said that he had a story he had to say and he was asking if it was okay and i was like yeah sure that's cool and then he ended up breaking the story to us right before this so i'm really excited now because he hyped it up <laughs> but go ahead mitchell what what happened man so basically so the, the league dad was like hey last podcast seemed a little off it was a little different <laughs> so you know i have some notes for improvement this week and i'm just like oh i you know we don't have to worry about that because i have a story to explain so last week uh saturday during like um before yes. the, we recorded the podcast, I decided to make edibles, homemade edibles. Right? Oh, okay. Um, so mm-hmm. I had no idea what the potency was going to be. I just followed <laughs> the recipe on the internet, and I had just a little bit, right? <laughs> and um, I basically time traveled. I time traveled a whole <laughs> two days into the future. I fell asleep all the way till Monday. Um, and then on Monday, okay, I was like coming to, and I was like, oh, man, that was crazy. Uh, time travel. Uh, and then I go out to the kitchen, and my dad made some food for me. I'm like, oh, sweet, some food. Uh, so I ate the food, and um, oh, yeah, I had made the edibles into can of butter. Uh-huh. And so I would eaten the food, and then I went back into the kitchen, opened the fridge, and I realized that my can of butter had a huge chunk out of it missing. Oh. And I asked my dad, did you use this? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh. And I was oh. like, did you have any? He had had some food. Oh, man. The day I had come back from being – like super high i had eaten a whole chunk right oh so my the God. first time i had like this much just a tiny bit the second time there was a whole corner chunked out of the little bowl oh, that man. i made and uh i time traveled another two days um <laughs> uh my dad i had him puke it out so he wouldn't get too uh sick yeah a couple hours later he's just giggling on the couch like a maniac so funny. <laughs> <laughs> i um, love it and then yeah so basically, during the podcast on Tuesday, I was still like in the multiverse, and I was just not even remotely here. I don't remember much of what I said on the podcast. <laughs> I just remember waking up and being like, "Podcast now, go!" And I just went, and then I was there. Went back to sleep, and I was back alive on Wednesday. <laughs> See, so now I'm uh, glad you were well rested last week. That's right. Oh, yes. See, that's so right. I was wondering too because after the podcast, right after, sometimes we we talk a little bit after or whatever. But bitch was like, all right, guys, I got to go. And I was like, oh, okay. I thought, you know, I thought maybe something was up. You know, I wasn't worried. I was wondering because I asked him about boot camp last time. He didn't even answer it. So I was like, oh, man, did something happen? And then he tells us this. And I'm like over here dying because I knew something was up. But now everyone that listens or watches is going to go back to the YouTube video from last week. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. And let us know in the comment section if you could tell that Mitchell was high. Because I knew yeah. something was up. I didn't know he was high, but I knew something was going on. And I was right. My instincts were right but i think that's hilarious man that's a funny story i'm glad your dad's okay i'm glad your dad had a little yeah, fun okay. uh but that's that's pretty <laughs> stinking hilarious uh <laughs> so all right 
We got to go on to some drama, not drama, news, but it's all the same because in the LCS, that, that's what it is, right? So let's start, I guess, with TSM, as always, the, the king of the headlines uh, as of late. Once again, more roster moves. This time, it said that they had a long discussion with Seoul and both agreed, apparently, that Seoul should move back down to Academy and uh, they have gotten Solo as their starting top laner. Uh, so once again, more moves I need to get your initial reactions and, you know, you can go into depth of what you think of this move. Uh, I think personally for me, it doesn't make sense. And I'll, I'll talk about it, I, I guess, after you guys kind of give your first thoughts. But for me, it doesn't make sense. Uh, don't really know why they're making this kind of move. But uh, yeah, that's that's my initial thoughts. I'll, I'll let you guys go ahead and speak on that. So what are you thinking about this? For me, it's frustrating. Like, how many times do we have to buy into some new player narrative? How many times do we have to get invested in a rookie or just some new player we haven't seen in LCS? And that's the, the team who's asking us to buy into these narratives. Like, Soul's a cool player, really nice guy, really talkative, learning a lot from Hooney. Gets benched after two weeks. Like, this is just nonsense. And I, I don't expect anything from TSN, but even, like, I, I saw this coming, right? But even then, I wanted to believe, like, hey, they're already going to not make playoffs or beat bottom bracket, right? Like, it doesn't matter. They should just, keep, like, start figure out who their building blocks will be and go from there. Like putting soul in mix gives me the vibe that they think they can somehow eke into like top three, like out of a miracle run. And that's just, unless he's like Zeus or Zeus or whatever from T1, like there's just no player of that caliber that T TSM could just put in there. And definitely not soul. Like soul is good, right? He's probably better than soul. Like that's not a hard, that's not a, that's not a hot take. <clears throat> However, yeah. what are you doing? You're just not developing shit. This is so weird. Um, I don't like yeah. it. I'm not. It's not unexpected. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, it's a bummer. I think to not give Sol um, some more playtime because mm -hmm. he is a rookie and he could use it. Right, Solo has been here and there for a while. Uh, I, I think it's really annoying that their name is Soul and Solo. I know, right? It's so easy to mix up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, I've been mixing it up on every broadcast that I've been hearing, every podcast I've been listening to. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you already tackled the perspective, right? It sucks that he's not getting development. So I'll tackle the other side where it's like TSM. Yeah, they. No, I mean, they might internally not believe that they can make a top three. The, the public might not believe they make, make the top three, right? Mm -hmm. But in their company, as TSM, as an org, to their shareholders, to Reggie, to whatever, they have to say we're going to Worlds every year. Like, yeah. that's their brand. It's they true. believe it. Um, I think that it's kind of admirable. I mean, we are going to talk about bottom feeders later as a concept. Mm -hmm. And I think in a sense, it's kind of nice. It's admirable that they're going to do whatever it takes at any moment, at any point to try and make a Worlds or win the split. Um, it's not smart, but it is admirable. I will say that. Um, the smartest thing clearly is to say, this year's a wash. We lost all of our players. We switched out all of our players for Academy. This year's a wash. See who we can keep next year. And there came another thought press to me that um, maybe TSM internally knows they're not keeping Soul or Solo. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're just all leaning on the fact that, hey, we're going to try and get as high uh, placing as possible in summer, right? Maybe we get to Worlds. Maybe we don't. High placing as possible in summer to get as much sponsorship and much interest, garners as much hope for their fans. And next year, we're just buying an international top laner anyways. So we're not going to invest in Soul or Solo. We're going to invest in just get as much out of these people this year, ditch them all for next year, and find just international imports. Because that's what TSM does, really, right? They just import. Something goes wrong, import, import, import. So I wouldn't be surprised that's their thought process. So they don't really care about developing Soul. They don't care about Solo or Huni either, really. They're just looking for the results uh, to get as far as possible. And um, it's a bit of a bummer, but I mean that's the game, that's that's the that's the show, that's the move. So I can kind of respect it. Uh, a bit cutthroat, but that's TSM. But see, that's what doesn't resonate well with me is that okay, admirable in the sense that they 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 have a mentality of we're a winning organization. We need to win. There is no time for you know whatever it is they say they you know or, or like any of the other teams like developing right. We don't have that time. We don't have that luxury, especially we're a. a a big brand in this league. We need to keep it that way. But in my opinion, like they don't have, they have the money. They are most likely, I mean, I wouldn't doubt that, but they don't have the image. They don't have the personnel, so to speak, even the infrastructure, as far as like, obviously good coaching staff. It, it hasn't been evident. 
Um, so this this strategy, even if what you're saying is correct, Mitchell, and it could be, I think that's a viable strategy where they just sack this year and, hey, we're going to get an international top laner. Maybe even a really good one. One, I don't know who would come here with the firestorm that TSM is right now. And two, even if they do, that hasn't worked. And they try to sell us as fans on the idea of developing these LDL players. And look what happened with that, right? But it, you know, so that's why I'm like this strategy of buying imports and and winning now, they don't have the personnel for it. I don't think anybody's buying it. And it's not a winning strategy right now. So as a former fan of TSM, I'm not a fan of the org in as far as this decision making process and this direction that they're going. I honestly do think like developing players is the best way to get fan support again because you can rally behind these no namers uh, or up and comers. I don't want to say no no namers. That sounds bad. And two, um, you know, I don't know. It's like you give kind of a fresh start. I think if you're still doing the same thing over and over again, fans are tired of it and they're not going to want to want to hear that. Go ahead, Mitchell. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, I agree with you. I think full stop, actually. Everything you said, um, I agree. I, I definitely think, like, I was trying to paint probably what's going on in TSM's head more so, and I think what they're yeah. going to do. This is, I kind of like, that's what I think they're going to do. Okay, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I fully agree that, like, I think if TSM wants to be successful and back again, that, yeah, the long game and developing smaller talent and building um, up trust and faith with the fan base is more of what's up. Um, but they just want to do it through winning, and they just want to do it through big names. Agreed. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Good for them, I guess. I, I think that's what they're going to do. But, um, yeah, I think that sticking with Soul would have still been – I, I would have preferred that. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the day where we can really see esports be sustainable, especially league esports. Like, we don't have any top organizations that aren't built off of a concept of being either a winning team or a past winning team. I think the closest you might be able to argue is, like, C9 or 100 Thieves, because 100 Thieves won recently. Like, those may be the closest to, like, having a brand that, like, people will stick with, even when they're crap for a, a good amount of time, especially on yeah. Thieves' case, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, like, for TSM, like, this is just, this is terrible branding. Like, we have teams like, what was it, the the Cubs or whatever in Chicago who lost for, like, 80 years, or not lost, but just never won a World Series. Right? Yeah. Like, 80, 90 years. And they still had diehard fans, like, partially it's geolocation, sure, but it's because you have an image, right? You have a system. Like, when Golden State wasn't good, it didn't mean every fan left. I mean, a right. lot of bandwagoners, sure, probably left. But in California, like, a lot of people still supported them because – they had a plan. They had a way of building a roster, and they didn't just have to have superstar like, like a super team every time to win. Like they won recently. They arguably were weaker than on paper than probably the previous ones that won a bunch in a row. I'm not a basketball like fanatic, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. But my point is like we aren't at that point. If if these teams keep selling us crap and saying believe in this, believe in that, believe in our systems, but then they never like commit. Like yeah, sometimes you can flip flop. That's fine. But they do it every time. You know, believe in LS. He's going to be the best coach. Oh, gosh. Ever. Yeah. Believe in Summit. MVP. Gone. Like, this is just so yeah. frustrating. It pisses me off. And I just, like, they just don't treat their fans with any respect. And so it's no wonder that the fans just leave. Like, people complain, all oh, the bandwagoners left for Liquid, right? And I yeah. don't think that's a false statement. But, like, why is it like that? Because that's the only thing you can get around. It's just like, oh, they won four in a row. I guess we're fans of them now. Like, that's so lame. As yeah. a Liquid fan, yeah. that's lame. I was a fan with the, of them when they were like 10th place or 9th place in relegations. you got to yeah. have a clear brand and a clear story and a message that people can resonate with. Or else, like, none of these orgs will survive. Yeah, it's, okay. it's like a brand that's more than just winning, right? Because like, there's only one winner. Um, so yeah. I, I agree with that. <laughs> um, I also think, I mean, I'll give TSM's credit. They do, have, they do have Instinct and Chime still, right? They still have Instinct and Chime in there. Um, so for how long? Developing, I'm just kidding. For how long? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, that, well, that's a real question. Is tactical though, right? Mia. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Our alternative is tactical Mia, or your alternative is pull a Golden Guardians and find some random person just in the middle of the split who's willing to trade. Um, but that's I mean, to, like they are developing Instinct and Chime, and maybe their thought process is less so what I was saying earlier. Like we don't care about Soul. It's more of that they want to they want to imitate EG and have more veterans to surround and just focus on the rookies that they think have the most hope. So maybe they're like, we think Soul's great, 
We wish we could give him more development time, but we're choosing to prioritize Instinct and Chime so we can have a veteran in top lane and focus all of our attention on just improving these rookies uh, instead of having three rookies, right? So I, I think that's a reasonable take also to, if we want to give TSM a bit of the benefit of the doubt. It's just with our history and with what we know of TSM, it's also believable the more sinister way of we don't give a crap sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, or, both are reasonable. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, check check this out. Here's another thing. is Spica, right? They got to keep him. They got to keep him interested. And the way things are going, it would be you'd be hard-pressed if you're Spica to stay in this organization. Maybe the, the reason to get some kind of international top laner or someone who's really good would be partly to try to entice Spica to stay. Uh, because right now, as it stands, there's probably really very little reason for him to still be on, on that team. Um, however, I will say the one bright spot is him and Maple seem to be synergizing pretty well. Like, imagine if they do get a really good top laner, and now he's kind of like, okay, well, I have half a map to work with, and we'll develop these these rookies. Or they take maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, an LCS bot laner and support well they already got trying but maybe an lcs bot laner from one of the bottom teams right who are who are good but still developing i mean i could see that and that might be if that's their strategy then okay because they do want to keep speaker i think that's a smart move to try to keep him and if you have to if that's what he's demanding or if you know if he's kind of like the lebron demanding what the team needs to be um then i think as tsm you kind of have to like you should um, and so in that, if that's the case, then I don't mind that. But if it's the other way around where it's like, look, we just want international talent. I'm hoping Spica is having a lot to say with this, because if not, it really just doesn't seem like a, a bright move. But I think that'd be pretty sick, like, uh, you know, to see uh, a developing bot lane with, you know, kind of three. I mean, Spica veterans. is not technically a big veteran, but he's been in the league for a while. But, yeah, I think it'd be cool. You know, be, yeah, I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool. So. Especially if the minor regions become um, much of a call. They don't take up an import spot. Then That's right. Oh my them. god! Yeah. Yeah. If that, if that, that rumor mean... comes true, I mean, they just have to get an international top lane and then just two imports. That's right. If that That's rumor true. becomes true, I mean, oh my goodness! <laughs> if they're so cheap too, like oh NA my is just turning into to worlds, like forget about it. North American yeah, yeah. players. We'll have yeah. the best champs queue ever because all It'd the be fun. players will be the international players and NA true, players won't sick. play. I mean, I'd I'd love it. I mean, you know, I will say I watched a little bit of a. Uh, LPL. I don't watch much other than LCS, but just for fun, I, I had some time and I watched them. And I was like, man, the game quality is just so different. Uh, I forget they're, who's the pl first tech, place team yeah. there. Um, is it uh, V5? V5, yeah. Or, or I was watching the, one of their games and I, I just, it was like night and day. So it is, it would be cool to see some some better games over here in the LCS. Uh, but let's move on to yeah. uh, Dignitas because there was also another roster move here. D River, who I thought was one of their better players on that team, has been transferred to Golden Guardians, which, again, I got to get y'all's reaction on this because, I don't know, I don't quite, if, I, if I'm if i Dignitas, I don't quite get it. I mean, it sounds or looks to me that it could be River wanting out uh, because if I'm Dignitas, I, I don't want to get rid of River. So let me get your thoughts on this and then how it kind of affects both Dignitas and Golden Guardians moving forward, if anything, because that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, I don't really see this kind of doing much for either organization. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys dig into it. I think it's mutually beneficial. I think the Golden Guardians clearly has a spark of like, they can actually do well. Their early games are actually fairly impressive. They just, they play with some of the worst, like below like some minor regions in terms of macro play, uh, past 20 minutes game calling. It is absolute crap. Um, I think that in this week's matches, for example, they played against C9 in one of those matches. Yeah. And they pushed them to the limit. Like that they was did. a it felt like an unlosable game and then they found a way. Like dude, it was Yeah. It was so bad. And so if I'm Golden Guardians and I think I like this organization has had a history of just taking like some randos and almost getting to worlds, right? Like Clutch got to worlds. And this is the same org basically. <clears throat> um I think this is a good move for them. I think Price I still think Price Arco is good, but he doesn't he hasn't had big stage experience for that long. He has mm -hmm. some individual talent. I can see his, in his aggro, but the calling is not there. So getting River, a guy who's been to Worlds and MSI multiple times on all those Flash 12 slash PSG, like, oh, I think it's actually just PSG, rosters, is like, 
a great move for them. And this is great for Ripper because he probably doesn't want to be on Dignitas. Dignitas is phoning it in. It, unfortunately, like that team is probably either 10th or 9th, depending on where TSM is right now. Um, yeah. And so I think it's mutually beneficial. Dignitas gets probably a pretty good deal. Golden Guardians probably has money finally because you know their team has won NBA recently and they're like good again. Mm-hmm. So I think it all works out. I think this is a good move for both teams. I don't like the concept of Dignitas being a bottom feeder who just doesn't care, but at least they let their player go and like have a chance to go to Worlds again. He has not yeah. missed the Worlds in a while, right? Um, so yeah. I think it's a good move yeah. for the individual and for Golden Guardians. And I, Dignitas, I just can't care more about. Yeah, I, I can agree with the... Uh, it's definitely a good move for River and for Golden Guardians. Um, I'll talk about Pride Soccer first. So I, I do think mm-hmm. that he's actually been playing pretty poorly this split. He was much, much better last split. Um, he felt like the catalyst a lot of their mid-game plays and kind of a carry in some situations. In this one, it feels like he is non-existent in the early game, similar to last split. But additionally, he's not exactly performing in mid-game or late-game team fights. I mean, he's getting broken champions like Wukong, and it does feel like he's not doing very much with it. Um, so, I mean, I there was the game against Cloud9 when they actually started to fall behind. It felt like he was struggling so hard to like get in there. Like, he would W in not get close enough to E and just kind of walk back and then his team would go in. I mean, it, it's a mix of communicate. Like, when a jungler looks bad, right, but you know they have good mechanics, it's almost always just a case of can't communicate properly with his teammates. And so yeah. some disconnect came. <clears throat> maybe Stick Safe showed up and is talking too much. And maybe he talked a lot more when Lost was there, right? It, it could be all these things. Like, But this team on Golden Guardians, they have a lot of veterans, like old veterans. Licorice, mm-hmm. um... Uh, Stixe and Olay are they're old guys. This yeah. is not a developmental roster by any means. Like so um I think that yeah, getting another veteran to just be like, hey, like we need to win for these guys or like they have good players. They're not gonna stick around, right? If they have a bad jungler or if they don't make it far. So I like it. Um I will say for Dignitas, I mean uh, okay, maybe they're a bottom feeder team and they very well could be. Yeah. But I actually don't think there is bad as it seems it does seem that at least their players seem like they're trying in their individual moments they just have really wacky macro sometimes or even in their game that was really close where blue threw on his ear it felt like it was just that he they mm-hmm. just threw in one fight but otherwise i mean i actually am not that disappointed about dignitas they have a lot of developing players like gamsu is returning from overwatch um their mid laner blue is actually not that. He's a fairly green player, and so is Neo. He's a fairly green player. Like their mm-hmm. only true veteran was River and Biofrost. And I mean, if you're saving money and you're saying, "Hey, we're really down in the dumps," like, uh, yeah, get rid of River. See if you can find a shining star in your jungler. I actually like the move, right? I I like it. I think for them, because there's no way they're making worlds. There's no way they're making top four or five, right? Just mm-hmm. save get save all the money and. You know, I if they're a bottom feeder team next year, then all of this is mute, right? But if they take this and can improve, right? We've seen this team hit fifth place, so whatever. Um, I'm okay with the move. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, it makes sense for Golden Guardians, obviously, because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, for everything you said, uh, I think yeah. River is definitely an upgrade from Pride Stalker. I, I think the thing is that's hard is that I think there's a lot of potential in prize soccer. I think people know that. And like, we're not seeing his best side yet. And uh, I think that's the hardest part is like, how long do you try to wait for that? Maybe there's internal issues. It's all speculation, but it just, you know, honestly, I think golden guardians can be good. I don't, I don't buy it though. For not for this split, at least uh, I do like that. You, you know, they do have more veteranship there. Maybe they can figure out how to win together. I don't think it's going to happen quickly though. Um, if anything, they're going to have to take this split and then go into the, the off season. If they don't make any moves, kind of go to the drawing board and see, figure out how, how they're going to win together. But the fact that they do have a lot of experience, um, makes me think that the work environment will be somewhat, um, improved as far as like figuring out ways to work together, to, to, to build their chemistry and figure out ways to win, uh, macro wise, you know, and execution wise, because a lot of times, um, like you said, like with with uh, I know you were talking about Dignitas, but like sometimes like the team plays well, but then somebody just kind of misexecutes. And I think sometimes you don't like the, you don't have to always do the most 
complicated things to, to win the game. It's just a lot of simple things done right and done it together, you know, makes makes everything look great, you know. So I think if they can do that, then they'll definitely be a, a good looking team. Uh, you know, for now, though, I, I think they'll make playoffs. I don't think they're going to do that great. And that's really just my my take on it for gold for Dignitas. Excuse me. Really makes no sense to me. Um, it does keep me scratching my head. I, I, I that's all I that's all I'm going to say is like, I don't know. But <laughs> I, I want to kind of segue this into a little bit of the LEC news, because this kind of does have to tie in with, you know, bottom feeder teams and so to speak. Yes. Uh, but in the LEC, uh, you know, Misfits, which has been a team in the LEC for a while, uh, they've sold their spot to Team Heretics, uh, who I've never heard of before. Uh, but, you know, I think I, I'd like to talk about this a little bit, even though it doesn't particularly relate to the LCS. Maybe it does uh, indirectly. But uh, Dom, I Will Dominate uh, had a tweet about it, basically talking about LEC and LCS uh, and, in regards to this news. But he tweeted out, bottom tier orgs have blatantly been putting together non-competitive teams in both regions for years, just hoping to sell the spot for way more and then they bought it at hurts both regions as a whole. Uh, I think I even saw Demonte retweeting and agreeing. Um, so I'd like to get your thoughts on this. And apparently, Team Heretics has some drama in and of itself uh, with reports of them not paying players and, and that sort of thing. But uh, <laughs> give me your thoughts on this. It's a lot to unpack. We don't need to spend too much time. But just your initial reactions to that. And if, you know, is that what Dignitas is doing? Like, what is Dignitas doing? Like when they make a move like this, it makes you makes it hard to imagine. Like maybe they're just a bottom feeder team and and maybe doing something like this. But let me get your thoughts. I mean, as the first or as a reaction I saw on Reddit, it was just like, what is it? They'll fit right in in the LEC or something. <laughs> um, for the, <laughs> there just there just have been perennial bottom feeders where you just can't even tell what their identity is. Like e maybe worse than NA, probably because I follow NA closer. But uh, it's it's sad that Misfits leaves because Misfits is actually a team with legacy. Like. This team mm -hmm. has done something. They took SKT to game five. They had a team with like Alfari on it and like a bunch of good players actually historically. Them and we ignore. Yep. Max mm -hmm. War. That, well, that was the Misfits team, right? I'm not getting them. Yeah, that was the Misfits team. Splice. That, oh, like, Splice almost became all broke. Splice became broke. All of them were in LCS is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like they're very good players, right? At some point or another. So like honestly, yeah. Uh, this isn't the team I would want to have leave LEC. I think there are some other bottom feeders that like don't have a legacy like astralis has no legacy in league like they just have always been bad. yeah yeah uh, almost always have been bad right at least they're trying this season uh, like all the other bottom teams bds could not care less about like really could not so if they left fine it's sad that mr is gone but at least they get a return on their investment also just further news they are divesting from like their um erl team as well so they're just out of league oh they're not wow. just, like they're just selling their lec spot they just don't care about league games Oh man! Uh, yeah, sounds like a just a massive pivot in their company. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Usually those don't work out for companies, so we might see in like three or four years. Oh, Misfits bankrupt! You know, like who knows? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a pretty pretty intense pivot. Um, dang. Yeah, I mean it's a bummer when you see old legacy orgs go away. Um, I actually don't know. You know, bottom feeder teams, I don't know if we've ever had any true ones yet that stick around. Like, I think in LCS, we've had a lot, but they are gone in a year when we had relegation, relegations, mm -hmm. right? Um, but when you think about LEC, right, the XL was considered a perennial bottom feeder team, and now they're actually kind of decent. It took, like, what, four years or something? But, hey, they did it. Golden Guardians was a perennial bottom feeder team. Tenth place, I think, like, two or three splits in a row or something ridiculous. Hey, you know, they're like a perennial mid of the pack team now. And they actually almost, they created the 100 Thieves roster we have now. True. So yeah. it's like, there's some, right, that we've had in the past. Do we have any right now? I don't know. But when I look at the teams, at least in LCS play, there's no team that actually, I feel like they're not trying. Every team I've watched in LCS, which this is a great thing, by the way. Mm. They, they look like they're trying. They look like they have a game plan. They look like they're drafting what they can draft. And all their players are, like, trying to play the game. Right. They make a lot of mistakes, and they're bad sometimes. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue that. But it doesn't feel like there's any real team or player in LCS that I've been watching that's just phoning it in. So maybe the org's not giving the right stuff to them. But for the players' sake, I mean, good for them. I, I think LCS is doing pretty good in that department. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right about that, you know, especially because we've, you know, at first I was going to say Immortals, but they did pivot, uh, I believe, like last week where, 
it did actually look like they were trying. Um, yeah, and they did. you even mentioned Dignitas. I, I do agree with you to some extent. Yes, they're the last place team, but there are moments like when I watch their games, I'm like, oh, they could win this. And then they do something dumb. Um, and so you're right in a sense that, look, they just aren't able to execute sometimes or they're just not as good as the other teams. I mean, somebody has to be middle and last place. Right. But at least they're trying and at least it looks like they're they're trying to make moves, uh, whether it be develop their young talent or, you know, get some veteranship and mix it up a little bit um, or just buy by names like the top tier teams. There, it seems to be different ways. Uh, but all in all, orgs do seem to be putting effort into that. So I can appreciate that with the LCS. And, uh, you know, it just brought me back to thinking about before franchising and the, the relegations and, you know, how badly we wanted franchising so that we said teams could then, you know, not have to worry about being relegated and they could, you know, improve their teams. And then we're here. And sometimes it feels like because of franchising, bottom tier teams don't have to worry about trying. And so yeah. it's almost like, either way you go yeah either way you could change nothing right so yeah, uh i don't know man. yeah so but anyways i mean i think uh again interesting we'll have to see more about this heretics thing like i said don't know much about it but again already seeing reports of them not paying their players so uh, hopefully hopefully it's not too bad and i'm i really am hoping for the players that are there that they do get this sorted out because that is not that's not fun, man. When you're pouring your your heart and soul into it, and you're not getting paid, like I, I hope they get resolved. But uh, let's yeah. let's move back on to the LCS and this past week's action. Um, you know, the big game obviously was EG versus Hundred Thieves. Hundred Thieves actually going two and zero this this weekend, uh, kind of showing that you know, hey, we are good and playing against EG. That's a big win for them. Uh, so let me get your thoughts though on EG. Still first place. Uh, again, they. They beat CLG, got their revenge on them, but did end up losing that 100 Thieves game. So what are your thoughts uh, from what you saw this week and uh, your thoughts moving forward about them? Yeah, I think it's time I finally give 100 Thieves credit. I, I think this victory, well, not not my favorite kind of gameplay, mm -hmm. um, I think they snuffed them out. And like that's, that's a little different from waiting for your opponents to make mistakes, per se. I think that... I saw, well, okay, there was that one. There, my one caveat before I start commenting is that one play in top jungle where Abadage gets a quadra was not yeah. Abadage playing well, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> they literally sat there, and they ran into it. I was like, what is EG doing? Yeah. Um, and that was the 100 Thieves special, right? But everything other than that, I think they played it pretty clean. They didn't make any like needless mistakes. Like Something that I think is admirable about this team that makes them consistently like able to you know like what we criticize them for it's also a strength in a way right liquid when they were doing well last split they were winning a lot of early games and then they would just throw randomly right and then they would yeah. win anyways or but this is something that 100 thieves generally is good at not doing which is probably why they generally do well against international like lower seeded teams like mm -hmm. they will go to against like whatever fourth seed it is right like liquid loses to machi but also beats that one like what the, what the crap is that yeah right yeah or beats ig like <laughs> Um, so this is still, I think they still need more strength from bot lane. I think that they did well at punishing EG's like overextending tendencies, but they, they outclassed them on that day. So I'll give a credit. I, honestly, this is a hundred these credit. I don't think EG looked like a terrible team per se, but they just kept pushing like they do normally. And they just over pushed and each person tried to become the hero and was the solo queue classic. Like I am fine with that live and die by that, that kind of gameplay. That's like what LPL does. And I think. EG has picked up some of that DNA from watching, from getting crapped on six times in a row by EG, uh, by G2. Well, to be fair, it was actually kind of close in some games. And then also losing to RNG and SKT, you know, so. I'm fine with both. Yeah. And both teams came out not looking terrible in my mind. But I, I give 100 Thieves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to, to me, EG 100 Thieves are the, by far, top two in the league. Um, I think, like, EG, they had a pretty bad draft, I think. I didn't. I really hated the Kaisa. I, felt I like agree. She got yeah. Range by almost every single champion. Yes. Um, the Kaisa seemed pretty bad. Um, I also, like I mean, that. he honestly, Danny played it pretty well, but it was just, it was just he didn't have the damage. He was always like going into fights late or low on HP already. Uh, I didn't like the Ari either. I actually don't think Ari is that good. I do think Ari is a strong champion in terms of just League of Legends, but for pro play, you got a lot of better options, I think. Um, so I didn't like EG's draft. 
And let's be real, guys. Credit is due where it's due. I, I messed that up. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you, sound like, you sound like me, man. I always get those sayings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Credit, credit due. Credit due. Um, <laughs> Abadage absolutely outplayed JoJo in lane, right? Yeah. He completely smurfed him with the Azir ulti timings, right? It's Ari. He's supposed, she's supposed to be one of the safest mid laners in the game. I mean, okay, credit to Abadage for going to it, but it was very clear that... Um, Jojo didn't understand the interaction, right? I do think that actually, in a weird way, like you either have to flat, you have to flash like late, which is super weird. But if you're already and like um, you don't want to use your flash, you want to try out play it without flash. Like your ulti has to be before he even ultis, otherwise you're just screwed. Um, so it's kind of like a mind game. So you know, Abadaki could play that mind game where he goes in, he doesn't ulti, and then Ari does ulti, and he goes up in that. But then. I think you take that because the other situation is Ari dies, right? Yeah. So that's what ended up happening. And Abadage played the best game of the entire year. It was pretty dang good. It was clean. Yeah, I agree with you. That quadra kill, EG was just like, let's just yell, let's just run it in yellow. Like, <laughs> we out, we win every team fight, right? Let's just go in and win it. And Abadage played it like he just played it correctly. And I think that this was his best game by far. And I hope that you know, from one of our top two teams that he can continue to play well because he's supposed to be our top, one of our top mid laners, uh, but he hasn't looked like it in a while. Um, so yeah, that's those are that's my thoughts on this game. I will I'm gonna tackle a little bit about Hundred Thieves just like conceptually. They are the OG TSMTL scale for late and win team. Yeah. They make the least amount of mistakes and they win the game because you're gonna make a mistake or their mechanics are too good on a base level or their draft is just too solid. Like they're too good at like just late game five by team fights. Uh, that's definitely their identity. It kind of makes sense. Cause Reaper is from those old days. Um, and he actually finally has the players to pull that out. Right. Like this team has the most predictable drafts almost always. Um, yeah, but I will say what's different from back then. And what's different now is that when you go across the world, especially to Asian teams, there are not a lot of teams that actually fulfill that identity. Because back then, it was actually TSMTL, Bjergsen Double of Teams, mimicking uh, Asian teams who could do this. Yep. Just play scaling, play late. But the meta has changed. A lot of these Asian teams, they don't do that. A lot of Asian teams are very active in the early game. And they don't scale for late. They don't have perfect drafts. They just usually beat us through mechanics and better decision making. But um, So I wonder how this, new, how this old style is going to look in the new world, in the new meta, when the game and the world has changed so much. And I think if they can all be firing and just be consistent, like how this team is designed to be, I actually think they could do some damage against some more wildy international teams, right? If an international team, like, I mean, when I think about IG versus uh, TL at MSI, it did kind of feel like TL kind of went a little bit down to IG's level, but they were just so consistent and IG was so up and down that they won and... I think 100 Thieves can do that. It's not going to be the most exciting thing, guys. But uh, this team's good. So, I mean, I, I think it's interesting. And we'll see what it looks like if they make it to Worlds. I think uh, it's a really good point. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I I think the reason why I have a hard time with 100 Thieves is because it is kind of boring, right? <laughs> because they don't, is, like, yeah. that's the style. I even hate it when you know, you're, you're, if it's, even if it's your own team, like the, the old uh, TSM or whatever team liquid, like just senior team. And that's what they do. Uh, because sometimes you want something that's, it seems, you know why it's because it seems like it's not proactive when, um, you know, it's something you just kind of don't make mistakes. You scale and then we're going to win team fights. It's, it's playing almost like to not mess up. Um, and that's not fun to watch. Like it's like, you're playing not to lose. Um, and I get it. Like, I think it works. I think also, I think it is easier to execute in a sense that you just need to not make mistakes. Just, just scale up, right? Don't, don't, you basically just got to know what you can give and not overextend and know when your, your turning point is right. But these, 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 uh, new comps or this new style of having to execute early, do all these things. They take a little more work to execute, um, and definitely can win, but it does take, uh, probably a little more skill to execute as a team and to pull it off. And so for 100 Thieves, good job. Like, you know, if that's your identity and you know what? Own it, right? Just go for it. It's working. <laughs> yeah. You're winning, they right? Are owning it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You might be like, people might be like, you're the most boring team to watch, but I know teams in all sports that are like that, where, you know, every sport has that team where they just stick to the fundamentals or they're not flashy, but they do all the things that you're supposed to do. And this feels like that team, right? Like you said, they got veteranship. They've got a coach from the old style. And uh, you know what? If if the rest of the league and the rest of the world is is moving to a different style of play, Let's see how it tests stands. It's you know stands up to the test of the old ways and uh, see if it works because the, I think they're more likely to go far than a team that that tries to play the other way and with these harder to execute comps and and that's my that's my thought process there. So maybe maybe they get into worlds. I think it's a reality, especially since C nine you know hasn't been playing that well and TL also, which we'll get to in a little yeah. bit. Um, but they're, you know I'm good. They're one and two in the league, right? Yeah. Almost like if they stay that, they need one best of five win and they're guaranteed worlds. Yeah. Through any point in their bracket. If they're one and two, if you win a single best of five, which come on guys, it's EG hundred thieves, they're going to worlds, right? And yeah. It's just like when you look at the the rest of the schedule and you look at the fact that they're one and two and the below them it does feel like there's a significant skill gap. It's almost guaranteed these are at least two of our three representatives now. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm sad to say it, but you know, just to touch a little bit on EG before we move on is just like, yes, they did lose the game. I still think they look fine. Um, you know, it wasn't yeah. the best game, but they're amazing. And then we got to see JoJo on Akali. You know, I was really excited about that because I know he's been playing a lot of more supportive style champs. Uh, you know, not really being able to get in there, but you know, he he did his thing on Akali. It was it was great to see him kind of have a little fun there. Um, but I do agree that Danny on K K um, Kaiza was not my favorite thing to see. Like, I, I honestly don't understand that pick. And when I saw that, I, I really didn't have high hopes for that. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. All right. Well, uh, then, you know, so top one and two, and then we have TL and then FlyQuest. Uh, yeah, like you know, that's very interesting to me because FlyQuest went two and oh, uh, which is again, a team we've been we've been riding high on, and the more and more I see them, the more and more I'm liking them. And on the flip side, with Team Liquid, again we're we're same boat as last week. Like, what is happening? This team, the expectations of them is is crazy. In fact, I thought it was funny because their first game, I believe, uh, they put uh, Han Sama on Seraphine, and I was like, see, dude messed up with his Lucian going in there, and so they're putting <laughs> him on Seraphine duty. They're like, Han Sama, no more. You're you are on Seraphine duty and you're gonna win this way. But uh, yeah, let me get your thoughts on those two teams. You know, Team Liquid, FlyQuest, kind of this this next tier here. Uh, because my team, Team Liquid, Team Liquid, not looking so hot. But I am let's happy about, about FlyQuest. Let's just okay, let's talk about Team Liquid and then and then we'll move right on. Because I do I do want to talk touch FlyQuest a little bit uh, yeah, later. We'll have but to do after, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, sure. go ahead. For Liquid, like okay, the Copium take is I mean. <laughs> they didn't get a win streak longer than two wins in a row either, right? And they won last split. So okay, okay. It's not over. <laughs> it's not over. However, as a Liquid fan, a lifelong Liquid fan, who will always support them, I mean, they're just playing like ass. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah. Like, there was game, the game where Hansama got his signature Draven. And yeah, some people blame yeah. him for not being able to carry, right? When he got that big 1,200 cash in or whatever. But, like, pre-6... Pre Santorin just last hits the thing while Draven's about to get his first cash in. Like, 1,200 gold is more, right? He got his cash in later on. But the problem is it's the power spike. It's yeah. The principle of picking Draven was so you could snowball that early game, right? And, like, put pressure on the rest of the map. And, like, Sentry just last hits it for no reason. It's not, like, a close kill. Like, they mm -hmm. had, like, more than half the lane to go. Or at least half the lane left to go. So that's egregious. Like, shit like this is just so painful to watch. And they did win with the Seraphine comp. And they showed that if they played boring... If they played like a yeah. super death ball comp, like they're going to win, and it's not going to be close. Um, so I don't know what they're trying. It look, it's, they still seem like they're just trying things, like that super death ball comp with um, GP Swain. Viego, Swain, <laughs> yeah, Irving, and Alistar, right? Like it, it was unlosable. They almost threw a little bit at times, but like it was just unlosable, right? That comp is giga broken if you can draft it into the right opposition, right? Which they did. Uh, yeah. I will say the good news, and I, I predicted, predicted this last week, they put Core JJ on Engage, and they yep. the team looked a lot better. Yeah, even though they lost a game to CLG, which is, <laughs> which is still horrendous, even though CLG has been looking better, they looked like they had some idea of what they wanted to do. It was so, every Engage 
just happened way more often and at a slightly higher level with Corey JJ. I would say yeah. game two definitely lowered the average, the batting average. But holy cow, is Alistair, I'm like, thank God. Don't put this man on another enchanter for the rest of the goddamn split. I pray. If I see him on Yumi in playoffs, I'm turning up. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to go cry in a corner. Uh, yeah. I think that it might still take a little time to get used to Core just being the main engage. And I think that his Nautilus left a little bit, to, uh, a lot of it to be desired. But yes. I think that was just a whole team issue. Um, I don't know if they should keep doing whip on a random ass pick in top lane either. Right. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Team Liquid, they're clearly not top two material right now. They have the talent, yeah. obviously, but they're not. Yeah. And like, they should re if they're going to experiment, like, get your top two seed first, then experiment. Yeah. That, that's it's super simple, guys. Can't can't f this up. Yeah, oh man, yeah. I'm I am not on the copium side at all. Guys. <laughs> I'm I'm so far on the other side. Yeah, like, I mean I don't dude, blame you. <laughs> I'm I mean I'm just gonna say it because nobody wants to say it, and we've been hearing little inklings of it, but Cordy J is kind of washed, guys. Oh no, he yeah, did not. It's kind of bad. He's looking like dude. It, this guy gets so much slack and credit from everybody, including me. I love Core JJ. He's a part of my favorite roster ever, TL 2019. So, like, it hurts to say it, but I got to say it. He is thrown stinker after stinker week after week. It's not every game, it's but it's like every other or every third game. He's got, like, just some really bad plays and just overall just, like, an overall bad game. His Nautilus game was, like... In some fights, it was fight losing. That's how bad it was. It was really bad. Um, I don't know what to say, man. Like, I don't know what's up. I don't know the reason. I got nothing for you. I mean, this is Core JJ. He is considered one of the best players to ever touch LCS up there with, like, Bjergsen, Doublelifting, Smithy, stuff like that. Like, it's just, you know, I don't know what to say, man. It hurts. But um, if you take nameplates off, this he looked really bad. And I, I, I'm going to say it also, right? Bjergsen's looking very underwhelming he has no clutch factor at all like he's just there uh he doesn't int doesn't do anything great hansama i mean i feel like he's reaching for the clutch factor but he really just can't get it down and santora i don't know man his wukong was really bad his wukong looks so terrible on it yeah. he's definitely been the most consistent player on tl but like after playing trundle and like all these other champions over and over again and then he played wukong and he like I was just like, this is the most broken champ, one of the most broken junglers. You're gonna smurf, right? You're gonna carry. Oh, you yoinked first blood from your AD key. Okay, let's carry, right? No, he's got terrible ulties and gauges. Missed time with Bjergsen. They had no synergy together. Like they had no synergy with Korja J and their engage. Like it's it's Wukong, Lissandra, Nautilus, guys. Like that stuff is so so easy to engage on, but they was just they kept mistiming it. And um, Blippo, I mean. I don't really get the Graves pick there. Whatever they wanted damage. Yeah. I, I will say it. he went for the Eclipse build, and Eclipse has actually gotten nerfed for rain champions pretty badly. It's it's not that great. The item itself is still good, right? Because you get the Omni Vamp and you have the percent armor pen. So it's not the worst build in the world on Graves. But I do think, and I hate saying this because I hate the build. I think that the Gore Drinker Bruiser Graves build might be the best build. You go Gore Drinker Black Cleaver. And just whatever tank item you need, or if you need more damage, you go Surrelders or something, right? I do think that's actually maybe the best build right now, uh, especially if you're playing against a lot of melees. Uh, and it's a bit lower damage, but if you need more damage, you go Shield Bow or Gale Force, uh, and you go full crit. But uh, the Eclipse build, just building a bunch of armor pen and random items, I think it's I don't think it's very good anymore. So I would have hoped that you know they would have figured that out if they're gonna pick Graves, right? This team is a multi-million dollar org, like just do some research, right? No one's going the Eclipse build. People are going the stupid Gore Drinker build all the time. So I would have liked to see that. Um, yeah, yeah, TL is just really disappointing, man. Really disappointing. It's yeah. it's hard because I do think... So, on one hand... Because <laughs> I, I am a Bjergsen <laughs> fan, so I'm Team Liquid. So it's like, you guys... So I got one person <laughs> giving me the copia, which I like, because I'm a Team Liquid uh. fan. And then yeah. Mitchell, who's kind of like giving us the hard truth, but maybe there's some truth to it, and I don't want to hear yeah. it. But 
<laughs> it's like it's like Core JJ's like like Michael Jordan when he's getting old and kind of washed up. You're no, like, but it's Michael Jordan. It. No. You're like Michael Jordan, yeah. right? But no, no. So here's what I will say, right? Like I do think that they are definitely not playing at what they should be playing. Um, at times, I think what worries me the most is that I don't understand what they're trying to accomplish. Like because one in the beginning of the split, it looked like oh they're clearly playing through bot lane. Right. And, mm-hmm. and and it seemed like they had an identity. They were like, oh, cool. And I was like, and they looked really good. Remember, I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going undefeated. They look so amazing. Right. <laughs> but, you know, like I overreacted as always. But, I, you know, in fairness, from watching them, it seemed like they knew what they were doing. They had a clear game, game plan and that's what they were going to do. But since then, it seems like, OK, are they experimenting now, trying different picks? No, oh, they're not playing through bot lane or what are they trying to do? Right. Like because. In my opinion, I do think that the best way to win is still through bot lane. And if they, you know, do that scale and weight, I think that's fine. They could do that. I think they would do well. But it doesn't seem like they want to do that way. It seems like they do want to try these harder to execute comps like the Lucian Nami, right? And really try to, to capture the early game and run with it. It's not working. Like, I don't, I don't, that's what worries me is I, I feel like they're overthinking themselves, I think I said this last split, like I think there's too many great minds there and they're just like overthinking the game. Like, I think they just need to play. Like, I honestly think they just need to play. Like, I don't understand their picks sometimes. I don't understand their comps. Um, and it really just leaves me scratching my head. I will say that um, if they just pick like champs that they've been winning with, <laughs> honestly, like I think they'll do well, like. Still to the to right, uh, Bjergsen is three and zero on Swain, and honestly, like I know it doesn't take much, but I think his Swain is is good. Like I think uh, there's certain champs that you know when uh, Han Sama gets are 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 pretty good. Like, uh, but I also think that you know Core needs to stay off Enchanter. So I think there's all these things that are so clear cut and dry that if they just <laughs> don't do it. They should be good, but they're, they're not doing that. So that's what worries me about them. So I have copium, but I'm also, there is some truth to, to what Mitchell's saying. Yeah, I I, I, I think, yeah, they, it's it's hard to say because, right, they, TL has so many players that we love. Um, I, I do think that, yeah, like, Bjergsen is very clearly, when he picks up these, like, champions that you we're not used to seeing him, like Lissandra. Like, Lissandra is obviously mm. a really strong pick in the Asian regions, right? Mm-hmm. But for some reason in North America, if anybody besides JoJo gets it, it looks pretty bad. It looks yeah. terrible. Um, like, it's like there's just such a massive gap between, like, Bjergsen Lissandra and Zhaohu Lissandra, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, something that really annoyed me about Team Liquid was that last week, I was definitely on the copium side of that. We gave other teams the benefit of the doubt that, hey, maybe they're just having a slow split, but they're going to ramp up, right? EG, 100 Thieves, last split. They both ramped up after having pretty mediocre regular seasons or regular splits. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe TL is doing that. But then Santorin, he just had to come out with an interview saying, hey, it's okay if we go nine and nine. We're just learning from our mistakes. And everybody was rightfully very upset being like, look at your roster. (laughs) Look at your experience. You do not get to go nine and nine and say, it's okay, guys. Like your only acceptable PR response is saying, hey, we really are not playing our best and we need to do better and we're sorry. That's it. If you yep. say stuff like that, people are going to get upset. I got upset about that. I was like, I was willing to give you the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, you're taking it slow. Maybe things aren't perfectly clicking, but you're going to ramp up for playoffs. But when you say, it's fine, it's just 9-9, nine and nine. we don't care. That reminds me of Double F saying Spring Split doesn't matter. And then he immediately gets booted, right? So, Santorin, I love you. You're one of my favorite junglers up there with like Smithy. Please, please. You gotta watch the PR, man. Jesus, that yeah. was bad. But it might be—it might be true, though. It might be true, though. Like, Maybe. and he just, well, because if he was paying attention to his PR person, he wouldn't have said it, right? So he's just yeah. speaking his truth. But I also kind of agree with the sentiment that I don't think he's the only one because uh, if you saw uh, Whippo was on the analyst desk uh, and then he even tricasted a game, like that dude was laughing it up. Like, I mean, I I, I get it. Like, don't let the losses bring you down. But if you got that competitive drive, like, I'm going to be pissed. Like, he, he made it sound yeah. like as if it was like, oh, you know, I just, yeah, I definitely misplayed there. And, like, I could have done this. And, you know, he's very analytical about it. Like, like I get it. Like, that's cool. Like, don't let it tilt you. But can we please get some, like, I would be upset. You should be upset. You want that from your team. You want the losses to, like, 
means something. Like I, I want them to win every single game, even if it's the regular season. And I know it maybe yeah. doesn't quote unquote matter because they're going to make playoffs and whatever, but I just hate that mentality from, uh, uh, this roster specifically, this $10 million roster, you know what I mean? Like this is a team yeah. that should be winning and, and doing it on a weekly basis and they're not. So yeah, that, that kind of phrasing, those kinds of words, and then seeing kind of the demeanor on the, the desk and like that, like that doesn't sit right as a fan. Like I want, no, like I want them to to take it seriously, but yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to say about that. I, I do want to talk a little bit about FlyQuest because I told Kevin, after all this TSM drama and after all like C9 and like we were talking about how organizations, we can't trust them. You know what? Maybe I'm going to be a FlyQuest fan because this this org right here is just, you know, they've just done so well. How can you not like them? Like they're developing players like they got great, great roster. You know, I, I just watched the Takui interview, I think, on, on the cast last weekend. And now I like them even more. And so I'm like... <laughs> Dude, this team is great, right? And they're doing well. So I want to talk about them a little bit. They went 2-0. and Granted, it wasn't like the toughest competition, but look, they they are consistently, you know, playing well. Uh, I'm liking them. Let me hear your thoughts on them. They're, they're like, you know, they could very well, I don't know, they're in fourth, which I think they could hold. That's a possibility. But I think if if teams aren't careful, they could sneak in a spot. I don't know. I don't know. Let me Let me get your thoughts. Yeah, uh, we've been saying it for a long time, just on and off, just because it's hard to, like, they're just not a splashy team, I guess, so we don't talk about them as much, but, like, Takui is just good. Like, he, yeah. his high, his level of play has consistently been, like, either good or at least not detrimental if it's, like, a really bad game for him, right? I think that's great. I think Jose has been playing well since spring split, and mm-hmm. I think he's still doing well right now. Their bot lane seems to have meshed even better. I do think Philip is not very good personally yeah. but i think what i like about it that even though he's not very good i really do appreciate that they're putting him in the right position for the team comp and they're not mm-hmm. injuring themselves to putting him on sejuani duty every game like yes he has played sejuani but so does everyone right he still has a bunch of gwen jace camille like that is great like i'm so glad that they're just putting him on the right character for the comp and like he's good enough that he won't be like literally like yeah you see it and you're like, oh crap, we're gonna lose, right? Right. Or like it's like when you see Alfari on a tank uh last year on Liquid, you're just like, Oh, we're gonna lose. <laughs> Summon <summit, laughs> one of his like four characters, like, oh, we're gonna lose, yeah. right? No, you don't yeah. feel that at all, right? You're just like, okay, he might not be a hyper carry, but he'll do what like the Camille Engage needs to do, and he's willing to look stupid to make a good engage once like and he does it enough, right? He hits more than he misses in those moments. His laning needs work. His yeah. map awareness on ganks needs work. But they're using him correctly, and he's not a hole, a black hole, right? He's not fake god. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, he's, he's definitely not straight fake over there, even though he has a fake <laughs> <laughs> <He's> retired, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's the bar retired for a whole you, year. Better than that, you're definitely a good rookie. Yeah, yeah he's, good, he's you're better, a good enough rookie. Good enough. I, I I think he's better than Kumo too. If I'm being honest, mm. I, I do think he's better than Kumo. I mean, just for champion mm. diversity in itself, it's just better than what Kumo was able to offer. Um. Yeah, I like I like the team a lot. They're really fun to watch. I think that it's pretty exciting that God, like even if it does feel like you know, to, uh, Philip mechanics could be better. Sometimes even I feel like Johnson's mechanics, I I it leaves a little like I need a little more right mm-hmm. uh, from Johnson's mechanics sometimes to be considered like a top ADC. Like he, I still wouldn't put him in like the top four even right like. So they have a little bit of that, but where they but where they lack in that, God, they are always on the same page. They are together. If there yeah. was ever a team that was together, this team, they like, I don't know, they must have magical comms or like they must have done some like some bonding like retreat out in the <laughs> woods or something. I don't trust know. Trust exercises. Feel, <laughs> yeah, trust falls, right? They they yeah. feel like God, this, this team is like more than the sum of their parts by a lot. Right, it's the reverse mm. team liquid, unfortunately. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, I I like this roster, and I'm gonna say that um, yeah, controversial statement, maybe not actually. It might actually be fine. Takui, top two mid laner. It's him and Jojo. I think they are the two best mid laners in the league right now. They are just so consistent. Um, they just don't mess up in lane, and they don't really mess up ever. And then they actually do have those like pop off moments too. I think Takui has him a little less, like, 
like Jojo's he's winning lane and he's pushing the pressure and he's like making big plays. I think Takui is just very solid in lane and he does make some pretty big plays sometimes. Like his Talia game, dude, his W accuracy was out of this world. Oh, yeah. Like, how do you hit so many flicks? <laughs> like just unassisted good flicks. I'm mm -hmm. like, just raw. Dang, this, yeah, so this crazy. guy's pretty good. <laughs> Dang, yeah. Like, yeah. so that's impressive. So I, I think Takui, I mean, considering. I would just love to see – I hope he can just get better and better and better, right? Like, he can just start dominating lane and throw these amazing uh, team fight uh, mechanics out there. Um, so, I mean, yeah. Right now, it's obviously – it's just right now. I'm allowed to change my opinion. They would be my, thir <laughs> they'd be uh, so my third seed. Uh, your third I'm an seed? old FlyQuest fan, too. Old That's FlyQuest true. fan. Right? When nobody believed in them, they it's made back-to-back -back finals. When nobody believed in them, they beat Team Liquid in a five-game series, and they almost beat Bjergsen and Doublelift on TS7 in a five-game <laughs> series. It went to five games against like Bjergsen and Dove. FlyQuest can do it, right? I definitely think that, like, especially considering that there's such a big gap between two and three, right? If TL and C9 aren't careful, FlyQuest, they will definitely take your spot, right? Like, if, if everything goes to what the level is right now, FlyQuest would take the third spot right now. Like, they would take it over C9 and TL at this moment. So, um, that, that's my hope. I, I, hope right. they keep, I hope they improve. They need to improve if they want to take the spot. They yeah. got to get better. But if Because if TL and C9, they're going to get better by playoffs, guys. Let's be real. They want to yeah. take it. Like, FlyQuest has to improve substantially. I think they can do it because their, their arc has been pretty consistent, right? Yeah. So... All yeah. right, Mitchell. There it is. I'll uh, is. I'll use your words and say I'll give credit due credit due to you because because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you were a FlyQuest fan back when Solo yep. was even yeah. on it. So uh, true. Yeah, true. that's true. So okay, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll say this: like I would love to see the t like Takui JoJo. Like I would love that to be a rivalry, just like the old yes. Bjergsen double lift. Except this time they're in the same position, like the same role. Yeah. Like that would be. So hyped to see those things because I have to agree with you. I think, yeah, they're him and Jojo, Takuya and Jojo are top two uh, in my mind. And uh, that's pretty exciting to see. Like, it really is a new generation of, of league players. And Jojo talk is about, so fresh. And Takui. Yeah, they're, they're so fresh and new. But also talk about it. Good versus evil. Literally. Yes. Like, it, 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 it writes itself. The memes write themselves. FlyQuest, right. Goody Two Shoes. Evil geniuses literally have evil in their name. Jojo trash talks. Takui's a sweetheart. Yeah, it's just beautiful. It writes itself. It's, I it's love awesome. it. So it's good to see. You know, yeah, that'd be out. that'd be amazing to see that. But I, I do <laughs> like the fact that you pointed out that that is true. I think their biggest strength is that it seems to ha like that they have really clean comms. That they're really on the same page as far as what they're doing. Maybe it's I don't know how their shot calling is, but we do know Aframu Aframu has always been a a very vocal. Um, shot caller but it could be a collaborative thing as well too I, i'm not sure but whatever it is they're doing it does seem like they've agreed uh to what how they're going to play and they've come to some kind of consensus and, and working together as a unit and you love to see that plus not to mention all the great pr they've had over the years with okay. you know all the environment stuff and and not hearing things about like their ceo being like abusive <laughs> to uh you know like it's kind of a a great a great thing right it is easier to get behind and now that they're actually you know doing good which is isn't really the case because they've always like you said mitchell they've always kind of been good despite yeah. You know, these yeah. other teams kind of taking the limelight, you know, but they are secretly, not secretly, but kind of under the radar, always been, you know, pretty decent. And I'm excited about this roster. I, I am kind of fired up uh, to see them do well. So that's why I, I wanted to mention them because I, I think just, I am. A, just keep it up, please. Yeah. That's all they have to do. You just please. Have to keep it up. Keep improving. Because if you don't, you <laughs> will lose the down, third spot. Please. Yes. <laughs> please. please. <laughs> like, yeah, they have to keep improving because, yeah. like, they, they don't have a lot of best of five experience, right, compared to TLC9. Like, if they want yeah. to beat them and take the third spot, they got to improve still every week. So, well, but if they do it. I think they can go it. Well, know, speaking yeah. of like Cloud9, okay, this is the last kind of section I want to talk about because the rest kind of don't matter. Mm -hmm. But CLG <laughs> Cloud9, right? Like that's kind of the next grouping here. Cloud9 went 2 and 0. CLG went, you know, 1 and 1. They they did uh beat Team Liquid. Uh but like I said, like and they lost to EG. So they had a tough schedule, right? Uh, but this is kind of the the next thing. Like uh, you know, who's who's in 5th here? Like because Cloud9 is always on that 
you know, that that preface that their, their roster is still scaling, right? They're still scaling yeah. up, but we've seen like yeah. hiccups here and there. And and CL, CLG is kind of on that preface of, well, you know, they're just going to keep going down. Like it's not really like going to sustain, but we've seen kind of, it's still not really clear cut to me. Like I think they're both right rightfully in the middle because they, they kind of have gone in that direction, but have kind of not at the same time. So let me get your thoughts. Like, you know, honestly, when it boils down to it, like I, I like, do you see cloud nine or CLG breaking into that top three, four spot? Actually, I mean, I guess it's more pertinent to say top three because of worlds. Like, do they have a shot? Cause we talked about FlyQuest. They could easily have a shot there, right? If they keep improving, but now, realistically, if it's not, you know, FlyQuest or Team Liquid, could it be Cloud9 or CLG? Well, who do you think it is and why, uh, you know, given what you've seen the past week? If it's right now, between those two, it's CLG. Like, I'm sorry, C9? I'll, I'll give CLG praise first. CLG has <laughs> really rough games recently. They had mm-hmm. to play against 100 Thieves, they had to play against EG, and they had to play against Liquid, right? And they beat Liquid. And I'm not saying that's that hard to do, per se, but it's still, like, <laughs> it's still a challenge. Right? Sure. It's a challenge. No, it's yeah. definitely a challenge. It's yeah. for CLG to beat Team Liquid, if you if you thought about it just, like, at the start of last season, at the start of this season, even, really. Yeah. Well. Um. Meanwhile, C9, like, yeah, they went 2-0 this week, but come on. Do we, do we watch those matches? Like, this team is, like, the only reason C- TL's not the only team catching strays out here. Like, mm-hmm. C9 is gunning so low below their potential. It is actually ridiculous to me. Jensen, I, I'll give him, like, he still needs to ramp up. If he's good by playoffs, that's fine. But mm-hmm. he's not looking good right now. Top lane, like, Fudge was the number two top laner behind Alfari. And in playoffs, he was the number one top laner when he stopped playing top lane, right? How is he, like, not just dominating? In this league where Summit's gone, Alfari's gone, you just you, Fudge, right? How can you not dominate? Flabbers, so so, and like the bot lanes, like just they're just not good enough. Like Berserker is getting caught in some positions where he shouldn't be. Like there was a six kill twitch on the Golden Guard site, and they lost mm. with Twitch Lulu. With yeah, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was not C9 <laughs> playing extremely well, dude. It mm. was so Omega lol what I was watching from Golden mm, Guardians. They also lost to Immortals. <laughs> like. It is so ridiculously bad. Like, Team Liquid still beat Immortals. I'm just saying, okay, guys? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, C9 that's had right. an extremely easy week last week. They went 2 0. So, yeah, they, they, at the end of the day, that's what people will remember, right? They'll remember your record, not how those matches went. But, like, don't be fooled. C9 is currently gunning. Like, they're basically, I think they're, them and Liquid are both gunning the same percentage lower than what their potential is. Mm-hmm. And it's like, which one will, like, get their crap together is the one that will get the third or second seed, right? But for right now, they're like doing worse than CLG. Even though CLG's recency record in my mind is like or not, on paper, it's bad. I think CLG has shown more sparks of like intent as a team and like mm-hmm. trying to win and trying to coordinate, even if they're like playing against much better teams on paper. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, both teams are pretty weird. I think they're weird teams. Uh, they're not bad and not good. I would say they all have the, they both have the strengths and weaknesses. I will say the thing that I feel like really defines the difference between these teams is that C9, they feels like they have better mechanics and better players. They're just not really on the same page. Mm. Um, I think in like little 2v2, 3v3s, it does seem like they're on the same page. Like their CC chaining was pretty coordinated. Yeah. Um, but that's that's not that hard to do, right? Um, it it does feel like C9, they have the better players. Like Jensen. Honestly, his Talia game was pretty smurf. Like, he, he played pretty well. Yeah, and sick. then his next game, it, it played kind of whatever, right? I mean, like, this team just seems very inconsistent. Um, I, it's hard to say also because, like, Berserker is getting Zeri every single game. But mm-hmm. it, it, it's getting less and less impressive. It's still pretty <laughs> dang good. It is. But, like, when you got Zeri, like, at the beginning of the split or last split, it was like, oh, he just wins the game. Yeah. And he did. Um, but it's not really happening as much anymore, which I don't know what to say about that. Um, Blabber is – he's coming alive, though. I will say that Blabber, he'll make a mistake and immediately make a good play right after. And it does feel like he is pushing his team over, like, that mid-game hump where they mm-hmm. always fall behind. Like, they always fall behind in the early game, and then Blabber does something to really push him over. Um, 
Yeah, and then Sven on engage. Ooh, man. His Nautilus was so bad. Dude. Oh, yeah. I, I, I remember <laughs> thinking in my head, like, we got to talk about this because we did want to see how he... And too bad Alistair is not here because I think he would have had a yeah. lot to say. But, yeah, you're right. a lot of things to say. Yeah. <laughs> dude, like, his Nautilus was so bad. Like, I mean, to his credit, he ulted the correct target, which was the Twitch, right? But besides him <laughs> we got there. Twitch, <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, that's all he had to do, right? That ultimate is so broken, and then uh, Stixay, I mean, he tried his best, right? But the casters pointed out very correctly, he burned Flash for a solo kill, and then he died in a mm-hmm. pivotal team fight around Baron. And that's honestly what lost in the game, right? Yep. And it shouldn't be. If you're a good team, that you should not lose off that one thing. But yep. they did. And C9 was over to take over. Um, yeah. I, and then, okay. So I talked about C9. Now let's talk a little bit about CLG because I don't yeah. have too much to say, honestly. They just seem like they're, play- they're a bunch of players that are decent and pretty good. They are consistently below the top echelon, but they can still reach higher with their mechanics and their decision making. They're more of a team that's like, they're larger than the sum of their parts. Like they do te- feel like a team that are just on the same page and they're trying and they, they, they have like that friendship vibe. We're like, Hey, we're all homies. We're all underdogs. We're all yeah. like the people that got thrown away. Let's just band together and let's just do our best. And it, it, they look fine. They look decent for that. They look like what I want from a middle pack team. I don't like you take it right now. Honestly, CLG and C9, they could have a five game slobber knocker and I don't know who would win, but right. Um, yeah, I yeah, agree. I really don't. But um, I, I do think C9's potential, I mean, we're going to keep talking about it, right? But it does mm-hmm. feel like no one, I mean, it's just hard to doubt them. It's just yeah. hard to doubt their players. I, I do think it's just they're going to get up there. Um, yeah. Okay. Last thing, Palafaker. He actually smurfed that game. Oh, my God. This is so <laughs> yeah. crazy. That's it. That okay. good, good job, Palafaker. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> uh, I had one thing to say, too. Uh, I'm really, really glad. Like I, this is just another example of how one player can just change a team. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think Jenkins was. Dokla. Bad. I think he wasn't yeah. great. He was. He's only better than Fake God last season. But you put Dokla in, like, yeah, he's not hyper carrying. He's like, he had, like hyper fed on his game against EG, sure. But <laughs> like, there's like, there's like a drive in this guy, right? This yeah. guy's been around since like the Optic days or whatever. Like even pre Optic, yeah. like he has been a name in Academy slash low level LCS for a long time. And the fact that he can come in and just play Yone, Fiora, Gwen, like Jace, like these are just all Giga Chad plays, like characters yeah. that like NA is just like known to be bad at, right? Especially NA talent, not like necessarily NA imports, but NA yeah. talent. Um, and he's not he's not infallible. He has a lot of like questionable games, but he's always got like an intent to play for the total win and not just to like not be. Um, and it, you can see it reflect in the whole team. Like he's. His KD is not great. It's like the worst mm-hmm. on his team. But yeah. his team is now like instead of being like tenth or ninth place, they're like we're talking about like could they be third? Could they be fourth? That's incredible. And I, I'm yeah. so glad someone developed finally in the yeah. academy system that dropped down. Right? Usually it's like some newbie comes up. Sure, they could do well. But someone who drops down, like we just never hear from them. It's like, true. Yeah. Just, like coming back and forth. Like I felt so bad for that guy. It's it's both contracts and Dokla, right? They both got revived from the academy system, uh, mm-hmm. and so yeah, really really awesome to see. Yeah, from the yeah. franchise but, era academy system. Hey, then, some of it works, some of it doesn't. That's what know? I'm saying. I was gonna say, but then there are some that did bad. it. Yeah, that did it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually yeah. I'm succeed. just saying, like we, it's just <laughs> so easy bad, to point yeah. to the failures, right? We should point out the yeah. successes one day. No, I I agree, and I'm I'm happy because I I love a redemption story, right? And uh, yeah. you know, I I think. You're right, because even though he doesn't have the best stats, there's something about he breathed new life into that team, honestly. Oh, if yeah. anything, for his personality. Like, I, I, for me, that that sometimes can, because they did a little spotlight on him, too, uh, this past week as well. Like, uh, you know, big dokes, right? Like, and just kind of like <laughs> where he, he was kind of uh, talking about how he, when he was first in LCS and then went to Academy and now coming back. So hearing his his journey through that is pretty, it's pretty awesome to hear. And I love it. Like, I think it's finally given you know, CLG, someone to kind of root for. Not to say that the other players weren't worth rooting for, but he gives you that kind of awesome redemptive arc. He can play these different champions. He's been smurfing in Academy, and he's got a personality. Maybe you make him kind of the the face of, of the org for now and rally behind that. And, I, and that's what they need because this team hasn't been good for so long. 
And now that they have new life, like, I think you got to run with it. And I think they're in a prime spot to do that. Like, I'm hoping they do well. Uh, but it's still, like, logically speaking, like, they still have some work to do. And uh, that's okay. I think they're they're in a good spot, but they have some work to do for sure. Um, all right. Any last thoughts on anything else, LCS, you know, any of the teams? I know we didn't mention some of the bottom teams, but if there's any quick tidbits you wanted to mention before we move on to, like, meta stuff and, and that sort of thing. You good? We good on that? All right, cool. Sorry, bottom. Good coverage this week. Yeah, sorry, bottom teams. Do better. I'm just kidding. You gotta uh, earn right. your place on the podcast. Yeah, that's right. We don't just talk about everyone. <laughs> or you, you make some drama. If you yeah, make drama, there you we'll go. Talk about you. That's yeah. right. We did talk about <laughs> TSM. On podcast than it is for playoffs. Yeah, that's what yeah we, we talked about <laughs> we talked about TSM and Dignitas and Golden Guardians straight up because of the news. So there yeah. you go. Drama. All right. <laughs> make more news. <laughs> make more news. All right, let's talk about meta, right? Um, you know, because, well, one, I will say that I, I'm kind of seeing the same old champions over and over again. But, you know, one that has really kind of been a huge, I think, impact uh, pick is Poppy. Uh, I think he's yep. kind of just yep. taken the jungle by storm. Like, honestly, I think, well, and it, it makes sense because of some of his busts, but also because with so many dashes going on in a lot of comps, like he does mess up a lot of things. Uh, and I've seen some good poppy plays and some not so good poppy plays, oh, some yeah. good poppy ults and some very funny poppy ults. So <laughs> it's one of those champs that is, is good, but can also be really impactful and game changing if played right. Uh, so that was just one pick, but I want to get your thoughts on meta so far. Uh, you could talk about him or anything else that you wanted to point out uh, so far in what we're seeing. Uh, real quick for the podcast listeners, uh, Poppy's female, so yeah. <laughs> Did I say him? Did I say him? You said yeah, him. You're like, saying him, and he. Well, time. look. Well, listen up, guys. I'm gonna do that a lot because there are like so many champions that I have gotten wrong so many times. We don't like, see gender on this podcast. Yeah, that's podcast. right. It Call us the progressive. We we're the Progressive <laughs> League podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, thank you for, for pointing that out, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, all good. Um, so for me, I think for meta-wise, I still think that there isn't enough experimentation in some of the solo lanes. I do think that GP should be played more, first of all. I think it's just such a good character. And yeah, I mean, Whiffle won on it. And so did... Uh, Someday, someday played it last week, and that was it, right? Dude, yeah, that pick is disgusting. It. Like, yeah, it's been banned a few times, but like that pick is disgusting. If you're not learning GP, like you, you're just not gonna be able to compete unless it gets super good. Uh, besides that, you can definitely tell the difference between a good and a bad poppy player. It's, it's super obvious. Um, I think Swain still sells some presence, and I think it's a very good pick. However, um, I do think teams need to understand mm -hmm. that Swain is not like a blind pick it's not a just pick it and like anything works um you yeah. need to know what matchups you're playing into as well as like what comp where does swing yeah. fit in the comp right uh, unless and you I can really... flex it though there's yes, flex true. opportunities that no team's really taking advantage of to top and buy i do think that fixes a lot of like the mid swain yeah. problems you only see, whipo yeah. has played in a top lane so far this is the only team that's shown that they can flex it, and they've only used the flex once, which they don't have to use it too often, which is fine. But, like, I just think Swain is so strong. You can see him, like, destroying elsewhere. But, like, I think people just don't only see the pick because it's already flashy, right? It's a, this giant, like, raven thing. And then they just pick it, and they get kited, and they just, like, can't engage. And they're the only thing that's supposed to be doing the fight. And I'm just like, what are you doing? So, um, yeah. I don't think LCS teams are stupid, and I don't think that the coaches are terrible at drafting, right? But they need to impress upon their players that like just because you like these picks does like just because you get a bunch of good picks doesn't mean it's a good comp and that's sometimes yeah. sometimes the players just choose what they think is strong and then they just pick for counter or whatever pick for early game and then you just get this like horrendous last team comp yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i totally agree right just because you get a bunch of op picks doesn't mean your comp is good but unless you're in 2018 then you just pick <laughs> a call the aurelia aatrox every game yeah, then you're fine dude. Those, Very those true. Were funny <laughs> Yeah. IG literally <laughs> took that playstyle to a worlds, <laughs> to 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 the max, and then you just get Kaisa and Zaya, and you're fine. You're fine. Um, but yeah, uh, I definitely agree that the meta is mostly this. Well, actually, okay, this weekend was actually pretty different. Almost all the bands were the same, mm -hmm. but um, Talia was super high presence, yep. and that is something that we've been needing to see for a very long time. It has gotten super high presence across the world, actually. Yeah. Um. 
and it was always strong. It was always really, really broken, actually. it Her E is one of the dumbest abilities in the entire game. Um, so I'm glad yes, that it's sure. finally just seeing a ton of high play. It's just really strong. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Swain is really good. Significantly more comp dependent than Talia, uh, but Swain is still very, very strong. Um, Poppy is also just been broken since her recent buffs. Since her ulti yeah. buffs and her W buffs mm -hmm. and... I think that I think they gave her a passive. Or they gave her a bunch of buffs, and I just think she's been strong, just OP strong ever since. And she has a lot of build variety. That's the great thing about her too: mm -hmm. is you can go chem tank if you need to catch up, position better. You can go frostfire if you need to stick on people, get a little more damage in, and you can still go divine sunder if you can get fed and you can nuke people. Right? Like I look back to that Immortals versus TL game. Um, if if Ken V, or was it Ken, what's the jungler's name? Ken v, yeah. yeah. If Ken, Ken v, v, um built Divine Sunder instead of Frostfire, I think they had a much better chance that game. Because, I mean, all of TL was big health stackers, and he went Frostfire, and he got fed, and IMT got ahead early. And I was like, you guys kind of needed the damage. Because, guys, cause, guys, Poppy slaps. Poppy yeah. really does a lot of damage, and it's kind of unfair. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> really exciting stuff. Um, yeah. And then, after that, I mean, I wish Alistair was here to talk about it, but we saw a resurgence of Spring Split meta where it was Jinx and Aphelios mm -hmm. a ton. Um, we went from, I don't know, Senna and Zeri getting banned or not picked most games to just back to Jinx and uh, Aphelios. I mean, these are still good picks yeah. with the durability update, right? They, they still fit that bill of late game carry. And um, I don't know how to feel about it. I'm always happy to see Aphelios because, I mean, he's just so fun to watch. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not sure what is good anymore yeah because yeah. i really don't know like because we've seen zeri's obviously still broken champion but we've seen her like kind of just feel like she does nothing sometimes she just 1v9s the entire game uh Aphelio sometimes f has that same feeling where it's just, he just kind of does nothing right mm -hmm. uh, or he one by designs the game jinx has that same feeling of honestly does nothing until that one team fight and then wins you the game right and that happens almost every game with her yeah. so i mean we we might go back to just like <laughs> what if it's just Jinx every game, right? What if it is? Because it's like, it seems like to be a fine matchup into Zeri. So, it seems to be a fine matchup into Aphelios. Maybe it's just Jinx uh, every game. Honestly, again. I think too, like with you saying that, I think that's why you have to ban Seraphine because I think sometimes Seraphine might just be the best option. Like, honestly, yeah. if you just Seraphine's want to win. The best, best, right. Best champion the exactly. Yeah. That's why, like, <laughs> you know, the best. yeah, it's the best. Yeah. Like, she just needs yeah, to be, or, you know, because otherwise we're going to see <laughs> see her just played in the bot lane. And it's so frustrating yeah. to watch. Uh, but again, be, I also, you know, because like you said, there, I don't know if there's like a clear cut ADC, you know, specific champ that is like, wow, yeah, we have to pick this. Um, if only we had an ADC. I, I know. If only we had a high right. ELO ADC <laughs> made on this podcast. Jinx last week. Like last week, I yeah. said, yeah. why aren't we seeing more Jinx? It's not bad. Like the KD carries yeah. that were good last split, which were, uh, which were the Zerkers like best were Jinx and uh, Aphelios. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. why are they just not being shot? I was high last me. week. I don't remember. Yeah, that's true. I'm only playing League Bad here. For yeah, it's just me. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's my fault. Still just as good, and they have a good really patch now. Yeah, uh, Zeri yeah. is broken. You just have to be good. Zeri is the yeah. ultimate, yeah. like, are you good test? She's basically modern Ezra in my mind. You have to do a lot of Q spam. If you hit them, you're just disgusting, right? If you space correctly, you're disgusting. You can go over walls three times thicker than Ezreal can, though, and you know, you're mm -hmm. even more mobile. Uh, yeah. and you have really good build. You can have like really meta builds, although they've nerfed a lot of her other builds, so not truly Ezreal. But uh, you can just tell the difference. That's the only reason it's getting through. Like in other regions, Zeri's like almost an instant win. If you're like yeah, a Viper, a Gala, a Kumiyoshi, Pentakill last anymore. night. Ruler, ruler, or death. I, I hey, you know got a Penta last night. Sure. Good, good for against KD. <laughs> Dude, against yeah. K Lol. Dude, against KD. Yeah, I was like, you yeah, forgot to mention well. it's against KD. Yeah. They, they always yeah. manage to get to game three against KT, And I'm just like, are you serious? Like, have you seen yeah. this KT? Like, what is T1 doing? <laughs> they also yeah. lost the game to credit. So, you know. Whatever. This is an LCS podcast, but the point is, Zeri is not bad. There, it's getting banned a lot in other regions, and it's yeah. just it, like the ones. She's who are definitely it, really good. Yeah. I have no idea how Berserker ever gets his hands on Zeri. Be he gets it every game, man. I'm I like, don't you guys it. want to I lose? Don't like, what are they? Where are people? Like, <laughs> to be fair, they are like shutting it down, kind of, um, at times. But like, 
He still won four out of five games. Like, what are you guys doing? This guy is still ha the best Zeri player here, probably. And mm -hmm. ha yeah, definitely. And has C9 gotten even close to actually like, like losing the game? Like they they've like gotten down and they've lost like Dragon Souls and stuff, but their base is never falling apart. And it's because <laughs> almost every single game, Berserker has Zeri, and he will just eventually one v nine his team fight. And I hate it. I, I hate that I, he I gets away think... with it so much. Yeah, I don't, don't give it to him. Um, last meta thing I think we can talk about that's interesting though is the return of Engage Sports. Alistair and Nautilus yeah. saw a lot of Pryo this weekend, um, and that's over like the Karmas and the Lulus. Seraphine's banned every game, right? But we got Tom Cannon <laughs> too. Not really Engage, but um, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know what you guys' thoughts are on that. I'm gonna be honest. Kind of look kind of look bad to me but uh i don't know I, I maybe it's just people are rusty my thoughts on that is like there's always a little bit of a lag whenever there's like a meta shift back to something you're comfortable on right whenever it's like mm. from engage to enchanter enchanter to engage you see some atrocities committed down there like you just see some people who look like they've never touched yumi in their life or lulu in their life even though it's like brain dead to play right it's not actually brain dead in a pro level there's a lot of spacing you gotta do sure and yeah. timing but like there's, there's usually a lag and um that is even more so for a character like Nautilus, who is not actually tanky um yeah in the yeah. modern league of legends he's just he will blow up especially mm -hmm. late game early game he's still good but like late game especially with the glacial augment you yep. rarely see yeah. like it's just it, he just blows up he doesn't scale that well either he just is there for a great hook at the right time and then a broken ult that is it if you yeah. don't time it well you are going to look like ass you're going to look like zendik or yes. Kork, his, to be honest his... Yeah, his hook is so busted, dude. The amount of so busted, stupid hooks it's we like, saw this week—it's like the vibe punch if it was like <laughs> made viable, right? It's like what vibe punch yep. should be. Um, viable, yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like I it. Mean, it, it. Why is still seeing play like all around the world once dude, in a while? And it's why? So weird to me. It's so I weird. It. I feel like Vi sucks. I'm not even gonna lie. I tried playing it because I kept seeing uh, like people in Korea play it and people in LPL play it. I'm like. This champion sucks. Like I can't <laughs> beat anybody. I literally Violet's lose a duel one of my to every favorite junglers champion. when I start playing jungle, and she just feels so bad sometimes. Like Dude, yeah, it, you... yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. you just get out man. I, I, don't know. I think Team Liquid will scale with their engaged supports. Copium, see you in playoffs, boys. Yeah. Well, yeah, see you in playoffs. I will say, you know what's what's pretty uh, fun to watch. Uh, you know, I I've been noticing. I know Azir has been you know good, uh, but I think. With the emergence of Poppy, like the the interactions with his alt and Poppy slam oh, is so yes. cool. But I also think like even with like <laughs> t with Talia, like right with her her alt as well, like Poppy just kind of also fits in really well. I'm actually surprised Poppy got through as much as she did. See, I I got the I got the right one there. Uh, I, uh, I'm surprised she got through as much as she did because. Honestly, that champ is just disrupting so many things. Like, ban her! Just ban her! What is going on? Like, I, honestly, at this point, I'd rather have the Wukong than the Poppy. I don't know. That's just me. But wow. I think she's Bad. just, in my eyes, like, just too much. Like, I think she's too game-breaking right now. And I, I, I honestly, when I see a team not ban her, I, I'm, I'd like to go in and actually look. I don't know what her win rate is. But that's just my feeling from eye tests. Like, I feel like Poppy's just her really good. Her win rate is not that high. It's 36%. Mm. Four wins, seven losses. But I do think she's getting, she's getting picked by every team. Bottom yeah, it seems like, like it. Yeah. So, right? Like, um, I mean, she is meta dependent, right? She's not like a carry jungler. No. Um, she doesn't like, so she does a ton of damage and she yoinks kills because of that. But she doesn't scale at all. So I think that is like one of her true weaknesses is that a difference between a six item poppy and a, and a three item poppy is not her damage. It's her tankiness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And. Yeah, but, like, I mean, let's be real. Like, her ultimate is just, not only is it really hilarious, it's just yeah. the funniest thing. It is. Like, that happened this weekend is seeing people it. get yeeted across the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just the recent change where you just twirl that shit and just wait, and then you don't even release it, and then it's five seconds later, you got it again. Yeah. Like, I don't think teams did that enough, honestly. It's so broken. You, you just twirl it. It's yeah, like, yeah, it does. Enough. It used to be like it's three like seconds later you get back. Now it's like a hard CC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's a real. It's a real game changer. Uh, and I think that when we see our poppy players get better, because we saw some real stinkers. Yeah, like, we did. <laughs> like you, you just hold that sucker. You yeah. just hold it, and people like just run away. Like we saw it get juked a lot. Her poppy ultimate. But if you held that, like mm -hmm. then they're just waiting. They're just juking themselves, and then you're getting away, right? Yeah. So I, I think the champion is is pretty good, but it, it's. 
it's more comp dependent than Wukong. I think Wukong fits in almost every single comp. Let's be real. Like yeah. you can play it to wombo combo, you can play it to team fight, you can play it for like dragon stacking early game comps. And you know what? You can kind of play it to peel because you just ulti whoever's jumping on your AD carry and they're screwed, right? Yeah. So I, I think yeah. Um, yeah, I think that makes yeah, sense. Good. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, is there any final thoughts y'all want to talk about before we wrap things up? I think we had a pretty good, pretty good coverage, yeah, if I would say so good myself. Co- good podcast. Good, <laughs> good, good content. Um, <laughs> stuff mitchell um, was sober I, I, this time i was sober this time yeah I was able to get more than five words out yes uh, <laughs> i was talking very slowly last yeah, time um, I, i'm just gonna say it right now i know eg just lost but i wish alistair was here so he could bask in it i think they're gonna win guys i i just have this feeling that like it just feels like eg even when they're losing even when they're messing around even when they have a stinker draft they're just like so good. Like they're so. Yeah. They they, they can just I don't know. Sort of thing they do on. have a magic. They feel like old G two kind of, but mm-hmm. like discount NA version. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they just yeah. feel Smart good version. to watch. Like they always feel like they have a chance to win. Like Danny is just the best player in LCS, man. Like there's just no contest. Okay, well it's ADC versus other rules, so hard to compare. But right. like. He feels like he's just on another level, and you give him a bad champion, he still kind of looks decent, right? Yeah. Um. So. And yeah. and, uh, final thought on them as well is Impact is still rocking it, man. Best uh, top You're laner monkey, of man. all time, <laughs> In the man. History of this podcast, we we probably said this line like. 60 times at least. right <laughs> like okay what? i'm gonna say got it. it's like a broken record a re- we should just have a button yeah yeah impact is still good guys but no but still though guys <laughs> like let's be real impact in regular season is still a monkey like he'll do the most yes. bonobo yeah. random stuff he'll get caught out randomly and then he'll still make a hype play and you're just like impact we know you're all asleep okay we know you're, you're just like not even giving a crap impact but is the perfect pro player he knows exactly yeah. how to balance like overworking and underworking at the right times and it's just yeah it's honestly he's, impressive I, I he's one of the oldest I wish it I is that. yeah i mean he's a he, world he's, champion because like i guarantee you all these ganks he's dying to right not gonna happen in playoffs it's just not yeah. he, he yeah. never gets caught out in playoffs man so yeah, yeah. eg is just too good I'm a big I'm a big believer now in impact. I wasn't before, but I am now because I just feel like that guy is just ultimately untiltable, and I love that he's just a true veteran. True veteran. Now took till season twelve to start believing impact. (laughs) Hey man, I'm a slow learner. Nine days, man. The sword and shield days, man. That that impact was so good. TIP days, dude. They were gonna they were gonna be a massive force that split if Shao Kahn didn't. Oh yeah. Boost his way yeah. out of the league. Into IRL. It's actually uh, inting IRL. That's he screwed it. over Rush IRL. too. Yeah. Um, that's true. Yeah. I mean, Impact's what insane. A, what a team, dude. That team was crazy. Yep, that team was insane. For sure. Speaking of Rush, you know what? I hope he comes back. Oh that was yeah. A thing. He's been streaming. He's hilarious. Yeah. He's hard stuck diamond. <laughs> that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> He's hard stuck just... diamond Korea. I'll never forget that one gank he made where he got seen and he just kept going. <laughs> yeah. Kept oh it got away. I was like, Jesus. That was care. the best casting too. Freak is like when you set your mind to something, you get it. <laughs> yeah, you get it. Yeah, man. That would be uh, awesome. Good. NA needs some more personality. I would love to, to see him over yeah. here. But we should, yeah, we that... should all report Kevin because he's got a Yumi. He's a Yumi main. Look He's a Yumi <laughs> player. Yeah. Dirty Yumi player. Mm. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I am a, well, I don't want to get into it, but I will get into it because I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Senna, it, I've oh. been smurfing it on Senna. I'm telling you, I am like on this crazy win streak. But more impressive than that is that like I'm literally getting, according to OP.GG, I'm getting MVP or ace in every single game I play, which makes me feel good wow. because then it means... I think that I'm playing well, but Senna's broken, man, because like, I just feel like she, she does everything. She, she damages, she slows, she's got a speed up. She's got sh- global yeah. shield and her yeah. build with Umbral. You have ultimate vision control. Like literally my KP is like 80% and my vision score is like a hundred every game. 
And I'm not even yeah, trying. She's broken. She's, yeah, broken. she's broken. I love it. A, a support item that becomes like a decent item for for the cost of what? 350 is a support item? 4, Kevin. 400, 400. Kevin. Shh. Just let it happen, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just let, let it happen. happen. Just uh, let me let me cool. climb yeah. because I am feeling yeah, it right broken, now. Support is broken, guys. Dude. Support is just broken. And when you put an ADC in support, yes. that's just like it's that's not just fundamentally right. broken. Yeah, it's not right. It's not fair. It's not um, fair. Did they ever try another Senda 2.0 like Samira 2.0 Nyla? Like, I, I don't oh. really see that. Oh, my We've gosh. We've never talked about Nyla. Oh, my God. I forgot she existed. Oh. She's broken, and it's not, guys. And it's not Nyla. It's Nila. Nila. Nila, Nila you can... I'm never gonna say your name again. I know. See, when I'm you, telling you. I <laughs> yeah. When you ever get enabled, right in pro play, banned every game. I guarantee it. Until she yeah. gets nerfed in the ground, this champ is gonna get perma banned. Heck yeah! She's so um, unbelievably OP. Oh my yeah, god, you is. just can't kill her, dude. I cannot ever kill her when I see her in my games. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I still don't know everything she does, but I will say I get <laughs> extra XP, and every time I'm bot lane with her, so as Senna. I see her go in 1v2, and I'm like, and I'm getting like, what are you doing? And then she 1v2s, and I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, and okay. It's like, <laughs> Never mind. She hits level six, and you're like, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm catching a wave, and I'm still level four, man. Yeah. Like, I, I'm <laughs> catching the wave, guys. Like, yeah. What is this riot? Yeah. Like, actually delete the fucking passive. It's so Dude, broken. Yeah, it doesn't make I sense. I mean, it's just not fair. <laughs> um, finally, last thing that's broken that I have. Yes. Uh, you've all seen it. Actually, ARAM players have been seeing it for like like a long ass, like over a year. Oh, I don't know okay. if you guys can guess it. It's it. Tank Diana, baby. Sunfire oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Diana with Nash's Tooth has got to be the one of the most disgusting things that have become favor of the month. Like, it is literally in every Gosh. single game I play. Like, it's in every single game I play. If I'm not playing it, <sighs> my teammates playing it, or my opponents playing it, Tank Diana. I mean, I said this actually. A long ass time ago before the durability update yeah. i was like yo like frostfire nasher's mm -hmm. tooth uh demonic embrace diana and aram is pretty good guys well i guess it was just the most broken bullshit ever because mm -hmm. sunfire nasher's tooth diana and then eventually you do get a demonic and then just full tank it's just I, I, I don't know, man. Why does this exist? Why does this, <laughs> yeah, so why does this exist? What is happening? It, it's like it's getting a little tap, right? And maybe people will stop playing it. Like the Sunfire damage is getting nerfed. Mm -hmm. I still think it's going to be busted. I still think it's going to be really strong. It's going to be weaker, but like it's going to be pretty strong still. Interesting. So we'll see how the nerfs hit it. Maybe people just stop playing it anyways, but I don't know. Fun Never champion. Know. I. We might see it in pro. I'm just actually surprised we haven't seen it in pro. The thing is just stupid. Engage, yeah. tank, DPS, healing with Conqueror, unkillable monster, low cooldowns. It's just disgusting. Does that make the sense? Review of Vitality's bow, that guy who's like, oh, yeah. still stuck in Visa jail. Uh, yeah. That, that Diana game was so disgusting. Dude, that, it just looked like <laughs> full damage Diana, basically. I was like, there's a Sunfire in that build, really? Mm -hmm. What the yep, heck? Yep. There's yeah. there's DPS items in that build. I thought he built straight like Rabadon's void. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Yeah, like, just one he even, shot. He like, went people, full man. tank after. He didn't even go like demonic. He just went fawn after the um oh, the yeah. sunfire. I was like, what the hell is going on? And he wait, he didn't build like, Nashers either. He he went Nashers. So Nashers oh, okay, into okay. sunfire or no sunfire into sunfire. Nashers and then yeah. full tank. And he just yeah. destroyed them. And I was disgusting. like, this is this is illegal. Disgusting. It's crazy. So stupid. I oh, my god, dude. I oh. bet you it was better. It was good. It's been I bet you it's been good for like a long ass time actually. It's just yeah. people have never no one, just, like, no one wants it. to play Diana unless it's just Yasuo. They just yeah. don't like see past the they don't they see as a character, I guess. I don't know. Not Diana, I mean if you go the Rocket Belt build, it is like objectively nerfed post durability patch because everybody mm -hmm. got more MR, but like Diana, I mean, she's so flexible with her build. You can go full AP, you can go this weird tank thing, and you can go, like, just all sorts of weird items because you have engage. You will always be useful in pro play. That's true. Yeah, fast clear. You'll always be good. Um, yeah. She's just harder to play for new, new like, junglers who never touched her. She's like, that little arc thing is just puts probably half the player base out of the contention. For That's that me. That's me. Yeah, I never play. I can't <laughs> ever get that on. Her Q was a straight line skill shot, 100% played, right? Heck yeah. Dude, yeah. No. For real. It's, All right. Well, All right. we're at an hour and 37 minutes. Any uh, final <laughs> thoughts? That's right. We could. Uh, no, just uh, go right. Danny. We're going to win worlds, okay. baby. EG to the world away. EG all the way. Uh, my, my quick EG versus Black Quest finals. Going yep. this weekend. I don't even know who they're against. They're going to. Uh, <laughs> I like let's it. Let's look. We're looking. Yeah, let's look real quick. Right, I'm so scared, actually. Wait a minute. TSM and C9. Oh, 
yeah. We okay, you guys. You, the you old guys pyramid. Yeah, yeah, the old pyramid. I can see you guys. That we're the new gods, right? The new kings. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, I could see you guys losing to TSM and beating C9 for some reason. Yeah. Instead of like the more predictable all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. Because yeah. TSM's not going to be in playoffs as a threat anyways. That's true. They'll be actually, in playoffs, but they won't be a threat. I actually want to see... Uh, so, uh, so I do want to see TLC9, but I also want to see EG versus FlyQuest. That's also on Sunday. Yeah. That's, that's right gonna, before. That's, that's my dream finals, baby. Dream that's, finals of this split. Yeah. EG versus I can't FlyQuest. Wait for that. Good versus evil. Heck Superman yeah. versus Batman. What does yep. Lex Luthor say in that actually, quote? I don't remember, but... Actually, too, FlyQuest is playing C9 as well. I think, you know... Uh, big week big for them. If that's they can a, win yeah. one of those, especially the C9 ones, then they're the cemented top That's one. crazy. Yeah, that'll yeah, be that'll be amazing to see. All right, well, let's... Uh, I mean, that's, that's going to be fun to watch. I think it's going to be a great weekend. But let's wrap things up. Thanks again to Kevin and Mitchell for always sharing their wise thoughts. We miss you, Alistair. Hope you can come back next week. Uh, but also thank you to all the listeners and viewers. We really appreciate your support. And if you have anything that you would like us to mention in the podcast, just let us know, Twitter or Discord, and we'll probably say it because we can say whatever we want on here. So, uh, But that's going to do it, guys. Enjoy your climb on the Rift. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Peace.